Hey everybody. Hi there, welcome back to Planet and God. We are doing our reading gospel reading challenge to the new year. We are in the book of Matthew and today is day six, chapter six. Day six, chapter six. Let's get into it. So chapter six uh, picks up the theme from where we left off in chapter five, the Sermon on the Mount. The theme of chapter five, the theme of this whole section actually, chapter five, verse 20 which reads, for, unless, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not and never enter the kingdom of heaven. That is the theme of the Sermon on the Mount right there. And so we're going to continue on that. Jesus is continuing um, through chapter 6 to give instructions on how to live in light of the Mosaic Law. Right? He's giving his perfect interpretation, the Messiah's perfect interpretation of the Mosaic Law. Um, and chapter 6, I found, dealt with three, um, three Phariasic practices. It deals with giving, prayer, and fasting, which are three things that, that the Pharisees would teach and do. Um, and then in all of these, again, the key point is you, if you're going to follow the Pharisees, you have to exceed their righteousness. He's not calling them righteous. He's just being facetious, sarcastic, yeah, sarcastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of notes did you come up with for chapter six? Well, like how are we going to break down the verses? Yeah, did you break it down this time or? Uh, kind of. I started like verses one through four deals with giving Verses five through fifteen deals with prayer. Uh, six through or sixteen through eighteen fasting, and then you have the the end of the chapter. There is talking about the treasures in heaven. So I mean, I specifically verse one um, talking about like you said, um, doing good deeds. Yeah. With that one, um, I just noted that like. It's a heart reaction and not a pride reaction. Right. So you're not supposed to be prideful in your deeds. You're supposed to be, you know, reacting from your heart. Yeah. To the Lord. I just thought that was important to note. I mean, like I said, I got that from chapter one. I mean, verse one. <laughs> right. Um, and then I think it mentions, too, again, that, like, there's rewards, right? Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Yeah. Um, and so it just points back to that. We will get rewards in heaven. Not right. that that's what our goal is, but... No, that shouldn't be. Our goal should be right. serving the Lord. The Lord knows our right. motivation exactly. behind why we do what we do. But, like, that's also pointed out there. So, you know, that's... Another thing to keep in mind when you're doing it, like, right, again, it should be a heart reaction. And if you're doing it uh, for rewards, then it's not a heart reaction either. Right. <laughs> it's still prideful because it's just heavenly prideful, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like thinking about that. But um, I thought it was interesting when Jesus is dealing with prayer, he deals with a couple of um, different things in, the, in here. Two things specifically, he deals with public prayer. Um, he's not saying that public prayer is bad, but public prayer for attention. Right. Is, is Again, your issue. motivation. Right, your motivation. What are you motivated by? Are you motivated by attention or not? So using a lot of words, using elaborate speech, flailing your body around, right? Those are the things that he's going against. And then the, well, and I think also, again, it goes back to the heart, because if you're doing something like that, yeah. but your heart is to the Lord, right? It's not about the people. It's not about the show. Then it's still right, right, not but, a bad thing. But it could be distracting though, and the people would think yeah, it's well, about okay, the show. Yeah, well, okay, depending on where you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And if you're doing it in secret in your bedroom with the door closed, it's different right. than if you're doing it standing on the street corner. Right. But also be careful, like when you are doing stuff. Like, I, I guess my brain would just naturally be thoughtful about oh, who people are watching me. Yeah. <laughs> um. But I, because it does talk about um, like the glory of men, also. Right. Um, 
which brought me back to chapter four when Satan tempts Jesus and he tempts him with the glory um, from men in the world. Right. So just to tie it back to, yeah. you know, earlier in the book. Where are you? Who are you serving? Where do you, where are you getting? Right. And that there is glory from, from men, right? right? It, there, there's glory on both sides. Oh, yeah, you get puffed up. You, we need you get, to seek after the glory of the right. Lord so we don't have those things. But. Right. So the other thing that Jesus addresses here on top of the public prayer is the heaping up of empty phrases, which is mentioned in verse 7. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases like the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Uh, so Jesus is really, he's getting at the heart of that empty phrase. You're going to say the same prayer over and over. You're going to repeat it. You're, you, that's what he's getting to. A, a good modern example of that would be using like a prayer book or prayer beads where you're doing some kind of guided, memorized, rote prayer structure. That's what he's getting to is don't be like that. The Gentiles do that. Well, I think, think it's also be heard. important to note, too, the Gentiles were, were uh, worshiping false gods right. as well. Yeah. Like, it wasn't to God. Right. And so, that, that needs to be key a key aspect as well, is who are you praying to? Are you praying to the one true God, or are you praying to something or someone else? Right. In that. And that's that's really the heart of what he's getting at here. And then we have the example prayer that God gives us. That Jesus gives us. This is a guide, right? Not to be one of those empty phrases because this could be turned into an empty phrase if this is the only <laughs> prayer you pray or repeat it repetitively. What I love about the right before he goes into the example of praying and how to pray to the Lord is that he says, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Yeah. I just find that very comforting to know that we have a God who already knows what we're going to ask, but he wants us to ask because he wants intimacy with us. Yeah. So I just think that that's really comforting, and I love that about this section. And that really gets to the foundation of what prayer is. The foundation of prayer is having that personal relationship with God. Yeah. So then the next section The was... next thing, um, I go from 16 to 18, where Jesus deals with fasting. Um, the Jews would fast, would teach that you would have to fast two days a week in order to be righteous. That's what they would teach. Jesus, however, is not condemning that practice. What he's doing is he is condemning the public disfiguration of faces, the public wailing oh i'm fasting. right again going back to that attention seeking right. instead of well, who are you doing this for what's your motivation exactly yeah and i uh, i took a big swath here 19 through 34 the end of it the really the high level theme of the end of this chapter is to run after god and not after the things of the world if your focus is on the Lord, you shouldn't be anxious. You shouldn't be worrying. You shouldn't right, have these things in your life because your focus is on God. Yeah. I think it's a big thing, especially in the world. Well, I mean, it probably was even back then, but like, it's so easy to get caught up in the world yeah. and what's happening in your life and you lose sight sometimes. Easily. Yeah. Cool. Anything else on Chapter 6? I don't think so. Awesome. Well, we'll catch you tomorrow for Chapter 7, where we finish up the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, we hope you're enjoying it. Yep. See you See guys. See you later.